Hey guys, Sen here. I got a bunch of amazing two shots against the Capital Peak recently, so let's just hop straight in three plays. So going in against our first base, it is a corner peak with a dragon in the middle. Now this pace is really annoying to try to take out. It doesn't quite look possible to take out in two attacks, but sometimes against bases like these, I will just YOLO a Sparky. I'm going to come in from the flank and not straight up the gut because there's an Inferno covering this bottom section. If I try to push in through that, I'm going to have to spend an early rage and I really need the rage spell to try to go as deep as possible to try to cover the dragon and try to rage through the entire section. So we're going to come in from the right hand side instead, start the Sparky on top of the Spear Thrower and work her way down. We'll break her in down further into the wall and just use those giants to slowly tank for her. Like I said, I want to use my rage deeper, so I'm holding on to it for now. A Frost Spell. We're not going to talk about this Frost Spell. I didn't want to hit the Rocket Artillery and Blast though anyways, but it does cover the Dragon and it will make that a little bit more manageable. Rage now. We want to use a Rage Sparky Shell to try to grab the enemy cart. It doesn't quite get in range on top of the giant cannon, but we will try to chip away through the defenses one at a time. Sparky locks on the bomb tower, finishes off the blast bow, giant to tank the enemy cart. The cart stays alive and it's going to block my Inferno Dragon from trying to snipe the enemy super. All the air defenses are down, so now we'll use some ramps and bars to tank and try to make sure my dragon can stay alive just long enough to kill the enemy super. Inferno Tower locks onto my Sparky, so we'll zap that thing, but we don't get another shot. But the raged Inferno Dragon has just enough HP to get through the enemy super before the blast bow shot comes down and there's 9.5k left on this base. This is a very difficult finish, but let's see how we try to get this done. The rage is down and that means we have to drop our Sparky on top of this wizard tower. Look at the chains, rocket artillery, multi-cannon, and a rapid rocket. That is so good. And from there, you almost always need to freeze a backside peak like this. It'll be doing so much damage to you, and it's much more manageable when you can freeze that thing. And then afterwards, let's just see all of these Sparky chains because they are beautiful. Ram, giant to tank for Sparky in the approach. She chips down the wizard tower, locks onto the inferno tower, will rage down low, just clip the Sparky, make sure that the Sparky is standing inside that rage. We barbed to chip down the inferno tower afterwards because if Sparky got an another shot, she would have pushed herself back towards the Tesla we open up the wall and that pulls the giants in and this was a bit lucky I admit and the giants get rage chained down two barbs snipe the dragon post and tank the inferno tower on the sparky's approach down to the inferno tower huge sparky chain on top of that multi mortar to chain everything down over there sparky is still standing in that rage spell grabs the giant cannon bomb tower cannon locks onto the crusher will chain down the spear thrower so many troops are still left all these Sparky chains on this attack were so insane. This was a Sparky is balanced moment. Giant tanks the Zap Trap. Barb is also trying to chip away at that cannon, but it will go down. Does provide a little bit of distraction for Sparky. We have a couple barbs left and a ton of tanking troops left in the bar. I drop my barbs down low to try to clear the trash buildings because if we're not careful, we will still time fail this. Two giants should be more than enough to tank for Sparky on the backside. <laughs> that one giant gets absolutely roasted by those zap traps, so we drop down the second one earlier. Sparky will chain down the spear thrower on the left hand side, and it's just about the 12 o'clock side at this point. We have a Hog Rider and an Inferno Dragon, and I'll use the Zap spell to chip down the Tesla, and that way Sparky can one-shot the enemy Tesla and work her way closer into the base. The Peak gets tanked for one shot by the Giant, one Hog Rider on top of the Tesla to finish that thing off and push my way towards the Peak. You cannot tank the Peak with Giants when there's a Sparky in range, so Sparky will get locked onto and we want to push to that as quickly as possible, and this is the power of the Frost spell. Even if all my troops died out at this point, the Inferno Dragon is still left there. It has enough HP, it has enough damage to finish off the peak, but the Sparky is providing some tanking at this point. And unfortunately though, the peak has just enough HP to get one last shell to kill my Sparky. Minus 300 there, but a peak two shot against this face was really unexpected. So sick, the Sparky chains were absolutely amazing. So this next attack is a strategy that I like to use that pretty much no one else uses. It is a Sparky Pinata Graveyard Hogs attack. The idea is you have one spells for Sparky, either a Rage or a Frost, and that will help Sparky push into the base, but you'll let her die early on because you don't have too much tanking, and then that will set up for your second phase of the attack. Those graveyards go down and they get fueled by the Sparky death, and then those Hog Riders will push in 
deeper inside the base. So let's see how this attack goes. This was an absolutely beautiful first hit with a rage spell perfectly clipping this cannon. Barb to tank the zap traps. I don't want to open up these walls yet. So I use the zap or the barb to check for zaps instead of a ram. And afterwards, it goes by super fast. A giant to tank on the approach. Then we'll start a sparking on top of this cannon. Some rams to tank up the left hand side. I drop my rams uh, headed towards the left hand side because I want Sparky to move her way left. She locks onto this bomb tower, will chain down the multi mortar as well as half health the blast bow, locks onto the other bomb tower, does the same thing, but this time finishes off the blast bow and works her way deeper inside. The dragon has flown over, and the reason we drop Sparky towards the left is because we want her to lock onto this air bomb. Two shot will finish off the rock artillery, but the dragon is doing so much damage. Sparky gets her final shell off before she dies, but the dragon is being a little bit pesky. The graveyards have come down, one on the giant can, one where we see some gaps towards the top hand side, and the hog riders have slowly pushed their way inside. Rewind that if you didn't see, but we dropped down a bar because the dragon was being annoying and flying on over to distract the dragon for just long enough so my hog riders could push their way inside, but the rest of my hog riders fly straight into that peak shell and get one shot on top of that multi cannon before finishing it off, but huge first hit, absolutely beautiful hit, and two graveyards are still going to help assist on the second attack. A bomb on top of the peak has been set up, but we will need another race belt. And also, I have brought a frost belt, freezes up the infer tower, freezes up the peak, and that will make the peak a lot more manageable. But you'll see why I needed to use this frost belt later on. We'll use some rams to get those graveyards going, barf to clear the trash towards the top inside, open up the map towards the deployment for there, and then we'll use a hog rider to collapse this cannon as we work our way slowly into the base. The graveyards from the first attack have to carry us through. A ram to try to open up the wall towards the right hand side and try to kill that uh, multi-cannon as well as the rapid rocket before we send in our wizards on top of the peak from the right hand side angle as far away from the dragon as possible. Normally I only bring four wizards but when you're trying to chain down an enemy dragon or a ton of defenses quickly five wizards is the way to go. Just like here five wizards to try to kill the dragon on top of the peak as quickly as possible and the dragon never gets another breath off before our wizards kill it some hog riders to stun the peak before it gets any shots on my wizards and now some more rams some more hog riders to finish off that infernal tower that got frosted earlier the backside rock artillery is really annoying when it's guarded by this many defensive troops and look at this next rocket shell in a moment my wizards are trying to push their way through but the ram was not quick enough to distract the rock artillery and they all go down the hog riders also get blown up on the right hand side so it's not going great but we have one more hog rider to deal with the crusher we try to use those barbs to tank the rock artillery but they walk just outside of range because of those giants and the bulk of my hog riders get splashed by the rocket artillery but they get into the dead zone at least a couple of them survive and finish off the rock artillery all the defenses are down but the cart and those giants are being really pesky one of the giants have gone down to those barbarians the cart is going to finish off my hog riders for cleanup but we have a wave of larry's and it's just a matter of cleanup and praying that there are no traps outside of the base the raid cart ruin has gone down meaning the raid car post can go anywhere it wants and it walks straight into range of all those larry shields and gets wiped off the map the giant goes down the last clan house goes down and this was a sick peak two shot against this closed base up next, we have a corner capital peak that's very spread out. Again, spread out bases, you typically want to go in with golem because there's not enough concentrated DPS to try to kill a mountain golem that has so much HP. The hog rider that we try to use on top of the cannon to try to take that off on top of the golem's flank gets absolutely destroyed by a double giant bomb, which was kind of unfortunate, but it was also to pull the dragon away from its post that's being covered by so many air defenses so we can snipe the enemy super outside of range of any of those. One barb to finish off the cannon, I drag on top of the super once we can find an angle on top of the super, and because the golem walks so fast, the Super Dragon was about to fly outside of range of the fully ramped up Eye Dragon. If that happens, your Eye Dragon gets reset and gets destroyed by that air defense that I was shooting at it. So we used a Zap spell as well as a Barb to reset the Super, hold it in place, and make sure my Eye Drag had enough in it to finish off the enemy Super because the Inferno Dragon actually does win that interaction when there's just a max style air defense shooting at it. Minions on the left hand side are going to sweep all these clan houses, funnel the Golem as well as try to grab the Bond Tower 
and Maybert, the Crusher on the far left hand side. Golem is going to slowly work his way inside. I held onto the Frostbell because I didn't know where the Golem was going, but now that I see that he's walking towards this multi cannon, Spear Thrower, as well as Raid Card Compartment, I know that I need to Frost this section. He's also already gone to about half HP, meaning that we cannot afford him to take so much damage from the cannon cart as well as that multi cannon. So we freeze that thing up, preserve some HP on the golem, and just watch as he moves through the base and try to use our last few troops to help support him. Before he walks inside of range of the blast bill, we'll use one of those rams to try to distract on the approach. And it's all up to the golem where he wants to go. It looks like he's trying to wrap his way towards the right hand point defenses. So we use a ram to try to open up the wall, but then he just swerves his way around and we'll use the last couple of troops to try to kill as many of these defenses as possible. Operation failed because of the blast bow. We chipped them down and the golem has enough HP to try to work his way through, finish off the blast bow, finish off the spear thrower, makes it just in range of that final spear thrower and with its death bomb grabs that thing as well. 6k looted on the first attack with just a golem. That is the power of the golem when there's not too many uh, DPS concentrated in a certain area. We've also killed all of the enemy raid cart and post troops meaning that our second attack is going to be very comfortable. We're going to use a P.E.K.K.A on top of this cannon, try to slowly work our way into the base, some ramps to open up the map, a Zap Trap actually hits the P.E.K.K.A, which kind of hurts, but the P.E.K.K.A has a ton of HP, and she's going to zigzag her way towards the giant cannon afterwards, and we'll try to slowly work our way through the Tesla, the cannon, before we drop down our graveyards and to our big push into the base. Some barbs to snipe the multi-mortar as my P.E.K.K.A starts working towards the Tesla. We know that we'll have to use a Hog Rider to stun that thing, keep the P.E.K.K.A alive. She's already taken a ton of damage, but the Hog Glider is going to keep her alive and pushing through all of the trash buildings up the right-hand side. Frostbell on top of the peak and on top of the rocket artillery slow everything down graveyards where we see gaps inside the base and try to distract me for towers and any major defenses one last graveyard where there's another gap inside the base to distract both of the rocket artilleries on the approach some rams to tank for the pekkas and those hog riders on the approach and try to get those graveyards going some hog riders to finish off the defenses in the middle some more hog riders to directly target this left hand side rocket artillery sneak its way in take that thing out we have three more in the bag so much force still left in our deployment bar and look at that graveyard in the middle that rock artillery is dizzy it ain't ever gonna shoot at any of those hog riders the Inferno Tower gets stunned and taken down. We have one Inferno Dragon that we saved up to try to take out the Frosted Up Peak on the backhand side. One last Hog Glider to stun the Peak as needed. A huge Peak Shell kills a ton of my Hogs, destroys a ton of my bonus gold, but the Peak just does not have enough time to shoot that last Shell and kill any more troops, so we have a ton still alive on the end of this second attack. And now it's time for our double Sparky attack of the video. Don't try this at home. Frost on the peak, Frost on the tower, as well as so many defenses that will be a big threat to Sparky. Ram to see if he'll open up this left-hand side wall. It does not. That's why I had the jump for the right-hand side, just in case. Some more ramps to open up the wall towards the cannon, as well as the blast bow to break the Sparky in. We have no tanking for the left-hand side Sparky, and that's why the double Sparky is so risky. On the right-hand side, I used the jump to get the Sparky towards a far right angle to go after the spear thrower and break her into the blast bow compartment inside of the rapid rocket area over there but the sparky will wrap around towards the bomb tower and hopefully she'll wrap back in but if you'll take a look the rams pulled any zap traps up the left hand side broke the sparky in and there's not too much damage there there's just a blast bow there's just a frosted peak and the sparky will have just enough hp to take that all out as well as turn towards the crusher two shots will take that out as well as the wizard tower in behind the zap trap gets pulled by the ram and the sparky has walked into range of the inferno tower but the pushback is going to help sparky survive and reset those inferno beams finally we drop down our ray spell we held our rage spell for deeper into the base. The giant actually walks on me, but the rage spell is there to try to keep Sparky alive and pushing through the Inferno Tower as quickly as possible, and then cover the peak for a wizard bomb on the second hit. We're not gonna be able to take out the dragon because we did not have basically any troops left after the double Sparky and those rams to break her inside, and so we're gonna have to navigate that, but we have two perfectly placed spells down already, the frost as well as the rage spell, a pack of archers to lead in, snipe the dragon post, and let me drag that dragon wherever we want a jump on top of this air bombs compartment so this ram will not go in and it'll drag the dragon out a little bit further so i can use some wizards to snipe the enemy super 
the barbs. We'll also tank a peak shell, and then we'll drop a giant to tank on the flank, some uh, rams to tank as well, and then five wizards inside of the frost spell, inside of the ray spell to take that all out, outside of range of all those other defenses, and those wizards are going to quickly finish off the air bombs, and we have to get that hog glider on top of that capital peak before the wizards get blasted down those wizards chain down everything graveyards on the backside giant cans to help distract as well as those gaps inside the base to tank for any traps the rock artillery is still there on the backside a ram pulls two zap traps and matrixes them both one last hog rider to go in and try to assassinate that rock artillery a barb to tank the bomb tower a hog rider to stun the spear thrower one last barb still in the deployment bar the larrys are ganging up on the enemy raid card a barb to now go in to help assist to take out the tesla as well as push the hog riders through those last few point defenses those hog riders on the right will finish off the spear thrower those wizards on the outside are now starting to clear some trash buildings those two giants have walked all the way from their post all the way towards the top hand side and are going to finish off those wizards unfortunately but we have so much force left for cleanup the bomb is not going to be enough to blow up those hog riders as they finish off the last spear thrower on this base there's some larry's beating through the walls they'll get through finish up the cleanup for me and this entire base is down on the first attack, we went in with the double Sparky Bees. I knew I did not need too much tanking on my first Sparky to just try to get towards the peak, and I knew this black backside blast as well as Wizard Tower and so many other defenses over there would be the death of me if I did not take it down, so I took a huge calculated risk on the double Sparky to go in after this space, but don't try this at home. If things go wrong and you miscalculate a single Sparky shell, you will end up with a four shot or something absolutely horrid, and your clan will probably kick you out but in this case it works out and this was a beautiful peak two shot against this base is a corner peak with the peak in the very far back now this base is actually really annoying when there's not that much sparky chain value on the entry and golem doesn't work ever when everything's so compact like this but the one saving grace on my side in this case is that the enemy super dragon is on the outside so we can snipe that easily and also there is a raid car on the outside and we can use our pack of split minions on the entry to clear the trash buildings and assist from over top by dragging the raid car outside of range of any air shooting defenses and trying to take it out that way so we have a couple things on our side those are some of the most annoying aspects of the capital peak so getting out those raid troops early is going Going to make my life a lot easier especially for sparky and having the raid cart down so we're just pulling it out i noticed that there was a zap on the right hand side so we used a ram to test for any more zaps on the left hand side because the base looks kind of symmetrical there was so the ram pulls the zap trap and those barbs inside will distract the enemy cannon cart so we can use the barb and those minions to try to finish it off finally but I'm coming in with Sparky Rage from the very bottom side. Like I said, this base doesn't look entirely possible to two-shot, and so against bases like this, I take insane levels of risks. Going in like this is crazy in between two Infernos, but the reason why I do this is because I know that in order to push through an Inferno that's deep inside the base, you absolutely need to use a Rage Spell. And if I'm going to use a Rage Spell to try to push through Inferno Tower, why not use the Rage Spell to push through both? And so we send the Sparky Street on top of the Air Bombs, chains down the Cannon, chains down the Spear Thrower, then works its way in slowly, chains down the Spear Thrower, Rapid Rocket, and deals some chip damage to the Blast Bow as she moves her way towards the Blast Bow. Also, from the far bottom corner, she'll step outside of range of the Inferno Towers as she takes down the enemy bow, a frost on top of the bow, as well as the Inferno Tower, to help make things more manageable on the approach. And we're just going to slowly work the Sparky inside. Inferno Dragon on the left-hand side is going to melt through the enemy super. The Sparky will stand outside of range of the Inferno Tower. She shoots the Crusher so I don't drop any more tanking troops. Just let her chill out, finish off the Crusher, then move her way left before she gets in range of the Inferno Tower on the left-hand side. Now it's time to drop down my ramps, start tanking, open up the walls, and make sure Sparky does not get locked onto. This is really risky. Going into both Inferno Towers like this, make sure that right Inferno Tower doesn't lock into my Sparky either. Make sure I use those Giants to continuously go into tank, as well as some Barbs and the remaining troops in my Barb to keep Sparky healthy as much as possible. The Ray Spell was absolutely money. Our final Barb is going to help me chip down the Inferno Tower so the Sparky can one-shot that thing, and she locks onto the Blast Bow. Unfortunately, she doesn't lock onto a Cannon, which would have been much better chains, but one last shot finishes off the Blast Bow, an absolutely huge Sparky first hit now even though that hit was amazing that first hit on the entry i did not expect to get that much sparky doesn't actually 
probably wouldn't work from here because first of all, you have to freeze the peak on the backhand side when it's back here and we'll be shooting at your Sparky the whole time. And if you're gonna use a Frost on here, then you only have one reach for the Sparky and the rocket artilleries are spaced very far apart, meaning that it's going to be very awkward to try and navigate the space with just one rage. And so I feel like Sparky will not work for a finish and I will YOLO a Graveyard Hog. So like I said, I take very huge risks when I go in against a very difficult peak because I know that even if I fail, I will probably not 3-shot as long as I don't make some horrible, horrible blunders. And Graveyard Hogs kind of works here because I see that there's not too many gaps inside the base for 2x2 two two traps. Like in front of these compartments, they're all pretty closed off. There's not too many spaces. And if I can drop some graveyards to distract the rocket artilleries on the approach as well as get any of those traps inside of those little gaps, then I will be good to go with the Hog Riders. Now, the barb opens up the map towards the left-hand side. Then I can use some barbs or some rams to go in, open up the walls, as well as tank the Tesla, tank the cannon. One more ram up the right-hand side to uh, open up the wall for a P.E.K.K.A. to go in, tank the bomb tower, tank the giant cannon, finish off the entire left-hand side, and start getting our graveyards going. Then we'll go in up the right-hand side after the P.E.K.K.A. has all her walls broken open, and we'll use some more rams, some more hog riders to collapse the cannon Tesla, some barbs to kill the enemy giants, some more hog riders to collapse the mortars as well as the giant cannons to keep my graveyard larrys alive and distracting the rocket artilleries. <laughs> Pushing in to two rocket artilleries on the backside using Graveyard Hawks is really risky, but we have the frost on the peak, we have the frost on the right hand rocket artillery, and we're going to slowly work our way in. We have a giant to tank a rocket artillery once we are trying to push our way through. Get a little bit lucky in that the rocket artillery frosted up does miss my hogs. Those hogs sneak into the dead zone of the rocket and we'll finish that thing off. The giant is now taking the left rocket artillery. One more hog rider to go in after the spear thrower, finish that off, and then sneak into the dead zone of the left hand side rocket. And it's just a couple of defenses left. The P.E.K.K.A. is still alive after finishing the entire left-hand side compartment. Those rams did a great job distracting those single target defenses. Barb to try to sneak in to grab the spear thrower. There's still one more Inferno Dragon left in my bar. I have saved that for the very end after the final air defense goes down. And this is why Frosting the Peak is so important. Even if all my troops die from here, the Inferno Dragon should win the interaction because it can survive one peak shot and the peak fire super slowly. So now it's fully charged up against the peak and even the peak is locked onto the P.E.K.K.A at one HP, so huge bonus there, and we can safely finish off the last building, the Capital Peak, for the sick two shot against this base. And finally, let's take a look at a very common style of internet base. This is sort of similar to a base that Itsu posted over two years ago, and a lot of clans still run a similar style of Capital Peak. And the way I approach this is first, I'll use minions or whatever troops to snipe any ruins on the outside. Minions will finish off the rock artillery as well as giant post over here. And then if there's a blast as well as a dragon ruin on the left hand side, you'll use a giant and inferno dragon over there. Whenever there's ruins, you typically want to take those out in the first hit to make your second hit a lot easier. And then we'll use a frostbone on top of the peak and whatever defenses below it, in this case is inferno tower. So we'll frost that as well as get a spear thrower out of the deal. And we'll wait for the giant to go down before starting our next next phase of the attack where we're going to send in a sparky pinata so sparky up the right hand side with minimal tanking typically i don't go in with any giants in this case i thought maybe i would come in with giants because there is an extra rocket artillery that provides a lot more dps but it kind of doesn't work out anyways and my giant gets absolutely wrecked or it doesn't even stand in front of my sparky because it gets delayed and the sparky walks ahead takes the shots of the rocket artillery and those giants they did not uh, provide their money's worth. So I should have just gone in with some more hogs or some more barbs and some more rams, but we'll just make do with what we got. Sparky locks on top of this rocket artillery. We'll finish that thing off and chip down the crusher and do a ton of damage to the giant cannon. You just let Sparky go in on her own. There's not too much DPS over here. She'll lock onto the air bombs and finish off the multi cannon. The Sparky chains up the right hand side or the left hand side are very good. We're trying to avoid this raid cart ruin on this first attack if possible and save troop space so we can go in with some graveyard hogs on the bottom hand side just before 
Sparky dies, we'll drop down a graveyard to distract all those defenses, those Tesla spear throwers that would do so much damage to my hog riders, and then we'll use another graveyard on top of this Inferno Tower where there's a ton of gaps inside of the base where there could be a ton of traps. Ramps to go in to distract now. A ton of traps get pulled by those Larrys. That's a money graveyard spell, and that will keep my hog riders so safe for the time being as they slowly push their way inside. So many traps are getting pulled by those hog riders, but they'll have just enough HP to work their way through. And just as I was complimenting the graveyard spell, the peak locked onto the Larrys, shot, and then those hog riders ran straight into the peak beam. But we'll use the last hog rider that we saved up on top of the spear thrower to finish that off and expose the peak to an Inferno Dragon Snipe on the second attack from here. It's just a matter of those Larrys clearing as many clan houses as possible. We reach 51% and the Teslas normally would get pulled, but we actually killed them on the bottom hand side on this attack. They're usually are in different spots on the space but now the second attack I go in with two graveyards on top of those backside defenses and in, in this case they are blast bows and then we'll use our inferno dragon to try to snipe the enemy peak as we push our way in with sparky the inferno dragon can be really stupid and walk inside of range of the rapid rockets so you kind of have to get a tiny bit lucky or at least not get unlucky so the inferno dragon can stand inside and snipe that thing down hog rider to reset the enemy peak before it shoots at my sparky to preserve as much hp on Sparky, some giants, some ramps to tank the blast bow so Sparky does not get shot at on the approach, and we'll slowly work our way through. Normally, I typically like to use my rage early into the blast bow, but I know because there's an inferno tower on the back end side, I actually have to hold on to that rage spell for the back end side with that uh, enemy super, which is also really annoying if I want to have any chance at two shotting. So I'm greeting my rage as much as possible. The Larrys are actually helping me chip down the backside blast bow for one sparky shell to easily finish that thing off. And they're, they're doing such a great job at distracting the cannon and all those defenses so sparky can stay protected. Sparky can handle just a giant cannon as well as a bomb tower that's no problem there a bar to try to snipe the enemy cannon if possible and sparky is going to slowly but surely work her way around one last barb to chip down the cannon and actually the enemy super starts getting pulled over by all my graveyard spam which is perfect because sparky chips down all of those air defenses and we capitalize on the opportunity by using our eye drag to snipe the super outside of range of any air defenses ray sparky now on top of the multi cannon is a money shot finishing off the wizard tower finishing off the air bombs ray sparky shell on top of the crusher will chip down the inferno tower really low a giant to tank and then a hawk rider to finish that thing off and just like that there is no more defense is left on the map we don't have any rams for this raid cart room which is perfect meaning that we will not have to deal with that raid cart before finishing this attack because all you have to do is kill the post the troops inside actually do not count for any percent and we have two swag barbs left in the camp Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed today's attacks. Peak 2 shots are so challenging and so much fun at max level. Sparky and Graveyard Hogs are the top two attacks to learn from them, so if you want to get good at them, those are the attacks to learn. I'll have a dedicated Graveyard Hogs guide coming out very soon. And if you want to help support the channel through your purchases, you can do so with code SEND in the shop, but make sure you like and subscribe if you enjoyed today's video, and take care.